uh, whether you're seeing this on Facebook Live or standing at a correct distance from one another here. I'm Gillian Hare. I'm the board chair of Compass Center. Uh, we are so excited that we're gathered here today uh, to launch our public campaign for Safe Homes New Life. This campaign raises funds to provide emergency housing for survivors of domestic violence in Orange County, a resource that has not existed for over three decades. Now, before I introduce the speakers, I just want to thank the Moons and Tunes, who always uh, are so willing to support events like this. So thank you, Balloons and Tunes. Uh, I'm just going to introduce who's speaking for you today. Um, the program is going to be about half an hour. Our speakers this morning are Marilyn Jacobs Pryor. Uh, she's our Safe Homes uh, campaign co-chair and community member. Sheriff Charles Blackwood, our campaign sheriff. Penny Rich, chair of the Board of County Commissioners. Cordelia Heaney, Executive Director of Compass Centre, Ashley Arles, Compass Centre Development Director, and Vimala Rajendran, Founder and Chef of Vimala's Curry Blossom Cafe in downtown Chapel Hill. Now she's also one of our four honorary co-chairs of our campaign and the community leader. And I also hear that congratulations are in order, Vimala, uh, for her restaurant winning the 2020 Chapel Hill Chamber of Commerce Mid-Size Business of the Year. I think the finalists, yeah. Well done, Vimala. I think the finalists were Carver Coffee uh, Company and Flyleaf Book. Um, I'd also like to recognize our guest, Chief Blue of our Chapel Hill Police. Thank you for coming. Um, Compass Centre have three other honorary co-chairs and they were not able to attend today, but I would like just to mark them uh, in name. Gary Bowen, Dean of UNC School of Social Work and Keenan Distinguished Professor. Aaron Nelson, President and CEO of the Chamber for a Greater Chapel Hill and Carborough. And Linnea Smith, retired psychiatrist and community leader. And for the press that are here today, uh, there will be interview opportunities after our program, which I say will be about half an hour. So I'm going to hand you over to Marilyn Jacobs Pryor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Public speaking to be able to take your mask off. in 2012, and like many in our community, I read about this tragedy and wondered why she could not find safety in our prosperous town. I was surprised to learn, I was surprised to learn, thank you, that Orange County did not have a shelter for domestic violence, and to this day, many folks still assume that there is one somewhere over there, hidden somewhere. Um, Way, wanting to understand more, I reached out to Rebecca, Dr. Rebecca Macy. She's a researcher in this field at the UNC School of Social Work. And she was incredibly responsive to this query and wanted to learn more about what needs were needed in her, her own backyard. And with the, de with the blessing of the Dean, uh, Dean Gary Bowen, she conducted a comprehensive domestic violence needs assessment in Orange County. 
Dr. Macy's evidence-based research led to the Compass Center, which is the state-designated domestic violence service provider, to launch the Safe Home New Lives Initiative, an initiative that departs from perhaps the less nimble and less empowering shelter model, but instead offers an individual apartment and wraparound services during a crisis. So the loss of Shania's life was especially catastrophic for her family and friends, but I'm quite certain everyone was left feeling victimized. The loss of her life was a devastating loss for our community with a long-term ripple effect and left us feeling battered as well. Domestic violence is a community problem and requires a group solution. We lose a piece of our humanity each time a tragedy like this happens, but we can become more human through our action and our response. To each constituency that's participated in this effort, uh, UNC, UNC Health, local government and law enforcement, community members, represents a strength that can be used to bring crisis housing to our town. So let's weave these strong cords together and craft a quilt, a collaboration of services that provide safety and shelter to all of our community members. We are so close to achieving this goal Thanks to many donors during the quiet uh, period of this campaign, we raised uh, over $600,000 and are uh, ready to open up, or soon will be ready to open up three apartments. Because of the great need, we'd like to scale that to six and raise uh, about a million dollars. So this is our call to action. We don't want to squander this opportunity. Let's speak up, let's speak out, and let's take this issue out of the shadows and shine our community, our collective community compassion and funding and determination to bring safe homes and new lives to those seeking safety from their abusers. Rituals. Uh, good morning. My name is Penny Rich, and uh, I am the chair of the Board of Council Commissioners, and I bring you greetings. Um, also, welcome to my new COVID look. Uh, my hair looks like a lion's mane, and my face is covered uh, whenever I'm outside and not able to stand six feet away from everyone. Um, I'll take this all down um, after we're done with this emergency in 2021. Um, so, I am the sole caretaker for my healthy 91-year-old mom. She lives with me in a safe space. My son was part of our pod for a short time, but then he had to return to work, physically return to work. We had to kick him out. Safe space, I'm referring to my home. It's safe from others who may bring the virus into my space. It seems like a simple concept, but it's not for the thousands of survivors Compass Center has helped over the past five years and beyond. It's hard to imagine living in fear when there's not a pandemic, pandemic region. Now more than ever, we need to understand the need for safe homes, new lives. Since the stay at home order was put in place in March, requests for emergency housing increased by 116% compared to last year. Domestic violence protective orders have doubled. Shelter, something I've personally been working on with Cordelia and others for years. I just asked Cordelia when she arrived in Chapel Hill, and she said five years ago, I guess that's six. We've been talking ever since. Although the model has changed, the commitment and dedication from the Board of County Commissioners remains. Compass Center has a long history of assisting survivors of domestic abuse and is currently designated by the state as Orange County's primary domestic violence service provider. As an, out outside, as an outside agency, Compass Center receives a grant from Orange County each year. And I'm happy to say that it was one of the four agencies that will receive a slight increase this year, even as our budget shrinks due to the downturn of the economy. 
We are committed to help find a safe space for domestic violence survivors as they heal and try to move on with their lives. We applaud, we applaud the Compass Center Board of Directors, Cordelia, her staff, and volunteers for exploring safe space options. We are here to support you and invite, community to invite our community to, to do the same by making a contribution to help reach the campaign goal. We need your help now more than ever. Thank you. Be safe, wear a face covering, I know, wash your hands, practice physical distancing, and help keep us all safe. I think I'm introducing Chair Clapper. Thank you so much to all of our partners for being here today, including our partners in law enforcement, in local government, and our amazing donors who've helped get us to this place. Um, my name is Cordelia Z, and I'm the Executive Director of Compass Center. At Compass Center, we serve over 1,400 survivors of domestic violence every year with a variety of crucial services, but we've long known that emergency housing was a critical missing service component in our community. After working with UNC School of Social Work on a multi-year project uh, with Professor Rebecca Macy to research unmet needs of survivors in Orange County with a focus on housing, we identified an innovative scattered site apartment model that we believe will best meet the unique needs of survivors in Orange County. It will also, as many of you have mentioned, 
enable us to begin offering emergency housing after almost 30 years in our community without a domestic violence shelter. It's truly a thrilling moment to be with you all. And I'm so excited about the scattered site apartment model. Our plan is to rent three apartments over three years in different parts of the county. We believe that this innovative housing model has four key advantages. First, it's empowering. Survivors will be able to live in a single occupancy apartment with just them and their children as they begin to navigate their chosen path forward while still having access to support services and case management services so that they can help navigate the next stage after leaving an abusive relationship. It's safe. We believe that by leasing apartments in multiple locations and having the ability to identify new locations if needed, we're better able to keep the locations of apartments confidential, which is crucial for the safety of survivors. Also in this COVID-19 world that we live in, having single occupancy emergency housing is definitely a safety advantage over co-located shelter models. Third, it's sustainable because we're able to scale up this model as resources become available. And finally, it's accessible. We are the domestic violence service provider for all of Orange County. And so having a scattered site apartment model enables us to rent apartments in a variety of locations throughout the county so that clients from different parts of the county will have greater likelihood to be near their work, near schools, and near their social supports. Our ultimate goal is to raise $1,125,000 to be able to offer up to six apartments for three years so that we can truly expand this essential service and help more people access safety, security, and health. I'll now pass the mic to my amazing development director, Ashley Ollers. Thank you so much. We are thrilled, beyond thrilled that we are at this place today. It's been a long, long road and um, the fact that we're here talking about how much money we have left to raise uh, is amazing. Um, so for us to meet our big, audacious, scary goal of $1.125 million, uh, we have $540,000 left to raise. And the fact that we've raised over half of our, or almost close to our goal was raising $536,000 so far, we know that this community can step up to the plate and help us meet our big, audacious, scary goal to uh, to provide six apartments versus the three apartments that we're so close to providing right now. And so in order for you all to help us do that, to really provide something that's, that's transformational for this community, please go to our website, compasscenter.org, compassctr.org. That's compassctr.org and you will see the Safe Homes New Lives tab on our website, and I'll take you to our website for Safe Homes, and you can donate online there. And there's also other information about how you can donate in other ways, too. But thank you all so much. We are so thrilled that we are here. Tried to call India because the country. 
electric pole for India is 91. At that point, for over 10 years, I was not even allowed to call India or be in touch with my family. So I was not only near a police station, I was surrounded by friends in my neighborhood. If anyone knows Barclay Road, um, all the neighbors are social workers, lawyers, um, and one of my best friends, Claire Lorch, her husband then worked for the Durham Coalition. Durham had a shelter in place at that time, and Chapel Hill didn't. Chapel Hill had a crisis hotline, which I then called two years later, the day I left. So when I actually left, the entire neighborhood and even beyond the neighborhood, communities came together to gather books for my children, clothes, essentials, because we left with just the clothes on our back. And the one missing link at that time, and we started staying at the homes of friends. The homeless shelter would have been an option. I couldn't explore it because the three children I had were 14, 11, and 8. Brilliant Chapel Hill Cardinal School kids in three different school levels. I didn't even have a car then. I had to get a um, court order to have one car taken away from my driveway. There were two new cars in the driveway. When that got repossessed, the Sheriff's Department in Orange County did a standby, took the car from the perpetrator, the key from the perpetrator. I couldn't drive that car, it was a stick shift car. My friend drove that away, I drove her um, uh, automatic car. And yes, I've done a lot of learning along the way, and what I did mention was in 1992, I had already been a in and out of the Henderson Street Women's Center, now Comfort Center location, for close to two years then, ever since we had come back from Canada. Why Canada? We had gone on an intercompany transfer. I was doing television uh, reporting work there. So I, I had a good life professionally, but inside the house, there was a lot of life-threatening abuse that was escalating. So from the Women's Center, I was learning to not take this, but also wait for the right time. And if, when I left in 1994, if I had a safe home that was really adequate for my children and me, I would now safely say my children would have been less traumatized today than they were then, because certain incidents after that contributed to us feeling further unsafe. And you know, the incident that happened here eight years ago, that was what would have happened at ST Fields. I was stalked, my child was kidnapped. We had to call the police multiple times. But today I'm here to say this entire community stood with me and short of what we now will be calling safe homes, I had everything I needed to be a thriving community member and you know, as people call me now a community leader. And I heard the figure, um, Ashley, what was that figure? 150,000 is the goal now? Yeah, remaining? Soon to be 149 because I brought a thousand dollar check. Uh, yeah, I'm an aspiring writer, by the way. If I don't ever read for without a pen. Who else wants to be a writer here? We have journalists in the house. So if you wish to write, dig deep in your pockets and write a check today, right now, or as you watch this on uh, social media or on a YouTube video, please write a check and you can send it to the Comfort Center. And in memo you say, save homes, new lives. Thank you. One last thing. Uh, Clay Blossom Foundation, which has written this check, is the nonprofit um, wing 
that has been doing a lot of field work. It was established about a year ago, but just came into full force during COVID-19. And we have today uh, lovingly provided these small snack bags for you folks. There's samosas, crispy samosas from Bombay, where I come from, and um, cardamom brownies to celebrate our present community where we, when the tough gets going, we bring out the chocolate. <laughs> Vimala, thanks to all of you here. Thanks to everybody watching on Facebook Live, either live or delayed. We really appreciate your um, attention to this really important need and invite all of you, as Vimala did, thank you, uh, to dig into your pockets and um, consider a donation to the Safe Homes New Lives Committee. My name is Jeannie Danu. I am one of the campaign co-chairs. We're now going to allow some time um, offline as we wrap up for any of the media here to have conversations with any one of us on the committee, um, any one of our um, members of the community that have joined us. Um, thank you all. Have a terrific day. Stay safe.